Hi, everybody, and welcome back again. This is example uh, two from our chapter on relative motion. And uh, in this segment right here, I'm only going to do part A. All right, part A is um, what is your velocity relative to the ground? Well, we haven't even read the problem yet. So um, let's just go ahead and read it and make some sense out of it. And again, I'm probably going to mark this up a little bit, but then I'm going to shrink this down so we have a little more space to write. <clears throat> so um, make sure you follow along and you can... You can read from your own, from your own page. All right. So you are riding in a boat whose speed relative to the water is 6.1 meters per second. All right. Let's go ahead and just write that down. I'm going to make that a red, red vector right here. The velocity of the boat, which by the way, let's call that object one. Okay. There's a boat. With respect to the water. All right. So then object two is going to be the water, and it probably would make sense for me to make the water blue. All right, the water is object two, and it's kind of flowing down that way. All right, but the boat has a propeller. All right, and the boat is able to propel itself through the water, whether the water is moving or whether the, or the water is still. The boat can move itself through the water at a rate of, if I can get my pen to right here. There we go. Um, it's supposed to be a vector arrow. <coughs> uh, let's see, six point one meters per second. All right. 6.1 meters per second. Um, not only that, but you're actually pointing your boat at an angle of 25 degrees upstream. All right, so let's give that a direction as well. We can say that's 6.1 meters per second at 25 degrees north of east. All right, so that's our red vector like that. So regardless of how the water is moving, um, the boat is going to move through the water at 6.1 meters per second, and it's attempting to point 25 degree, uh, degrees upstream. All right, well, let's talk about the water itself, the velocity of the water. How do we know the water is flowing? Well, because it flows over the ground, and so we can say the velocity of the water, let me do this, velocity is with respect to the ground. So the velocity of the water to the ground, that is our what? That's our um, 1.4 meters per second, right? 1.4 meters per second at what direction is that? This direction right here. Let's do south, right? You might say, you might say at south, or you might say at 90 degrees south, but as long as you know that that is straight down, you might say in the negative y direction, that's all that matters. Okay? So, the boat is trying to move through the water. The water is moving over the ground. That's this right here. <clears throat> so the question becomes, well, what really is the boat's um, motion with respect to the ground? It's moving through the water, and the water is moving over the ground. So how is the boat moving with respect to, let's say, an observer or a tree on the, on the, on the, on the, the ground? Okay? That's the question. Velocity of the boat with respect to the ground. Let's make that, um, I'll make that orange. All right? Velocity of the boat to the ground. That's what we want to find. That's what part A is, all right? What is your velocity relative to the ground? So let's see if, we, uh, if what we have matches the 1 to 2 plus 2 to 3. Uh, by the way, I should mark the ground. Um, the ground is going to be orange right here, all right? And that's object 3, <clears throat> okay? So can we add these together as they are stated? Boat to water, I'll just write it in black. Oops, velocity of the boat to water. Velocity of the boat to the water plus the velocity of the water to the ground equals the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground. All right, does that fit the one to two plus two to three equals one to three boat to the ground format? And the answer is yes, it does. All right, so all of our vectors are in the right format. We just need to add them up together. All right, now at this point right here is where I'm going to uh, shrink everything down a little bit and then use my extra space to find out what the velocity, and I should also say um, what's the velocity and the direction relative to the ground, because look right here. Even though you're trying to point 25 degrees upstream, since the stream is going to be carrying you downstream a little bit, your actual direction isn't going to be the direction that you're originally trying to point, okay? So anyway, let's just go ahead and I'm gonna shrink all this down right here 
and um, we're going to just continue with a little bit more space. Okay, so we can add together the velocity of the boat to the water and add to that the velocity of the water to the ground. That's a G right there in order to get the velocity of the boat to the ground. Like so, all right? But in this case, we can't really, we can't really, really do it in, in unit vector notation because we don't really have these, well, let's see, the, the water to the ground is, lies right on the y-axis, but this one right here, this velocity of the boat through the water is kind of at some weird angle north of east. So let's, what we're gonna have to do is break them into components, and for that, we're gonna use our component method of vector addition, all right? So that's gonna, gonna, that's gonna come in handy right here. All right, so how do we add these together? Um, let's see here. The vector, we're gonna name right there, okay? Magnitude of that vector, the angle that it is from the horizontal, the x component, and the y component. All right, remember doing this? So let's see if I can I have a menu bar here that's right in the way. I'm trying to get it out of the way. It's not being uh, very cooperative. That's all right. I'll just keep drawing my lines like so. <clears throat> and uh, all right, so we want the, uh, can I shrink this down a little bit? There we go. That's convenient. Uh, we want the velocity of the boat to the water plus the velocity of the water to the ground. 1 to 2, plus 2 to 3, in order to get the velocity of the boat to the ground. Velocity of the boat to the ground. Now really, the, um, the relative motion principle that we're using, we've already used. We've already said, great, we can add that plus that to get that. We don't need to change the direction of any of the subscripts or anything like that. Now it really just becomes regular old vector addition to find out what the actual velocity of the boat to the ground is. But... That's just as important because uh, that's why we did that, so we know how to add um, vectors using the, the, uh, the component method. So let's just go ahead and do that. So velocity of the boat to the water. We said the, uh, the boat moves through the water at 6.1 meters per second, right? What direction is that? Well, it's 25 degrees north of east, right? Or we can draw it kind of like that, all right? How about the velocity of the water to the ground? Let's do that before we get uh, breaking it into our components. Velocity of the water to the ground is 1.4 meters per second. That's the actual magnitude. But what's the direction? The direction is, you might say, 90 degrees due south, right? Or straight south like that. And that's the direction that the water is going right there. Okay, so in order to add these vectors together, we need to add together the x components and the y components. Let's find out what those x and y components are. Remember, x, to find x, is going to be the magnitude times the sine of theta, right? Magnitude, and I'll write this, if I can squeeze this in here, the magnitude of the sine, or sine, did I say sine? I'm sorry, x is cosine. Magnitude cosine of theta, and y is magnitude times the sine of theta, okay? So for um, for velocity of the boat to the water, what is that? Uh, 6.1 cosine 25, right? 6.1 cosine 25, I get 5.5, let's go with 5.5. 5.5 meters per second. 5.5 meters per second in the x direction, and what's the y direction? 6.1 sine of theta, 6.1 sine of 25, that gives us 2. Point, I'll say 2.6. 2.6 meters per second in the y direction. Now, real quick, let's ask ourselves, are either of those going to be negative? With this direction, is it a negative x or negative y? The answer is no, right? Both, that's, that's a positive x direction, and that's a positive y direction, so they're both going to stay positive. Okay, great. Let's do the, y, the x and y components for velocity of the water to the ground. All right, this right here. Oops, I didn't mean to write in there. What is... Magnitude times the cosine of theta. What's well, 1.4 times the cosine of 90 degrees? 1.4 cosine 90 degrees. Oh, wait a minute. The, the cosine, anything times the cosine of 90 degrees is going to be zero, right? Because cosine of 90 
is zero degrees. So that is gonna be zero. And that should make sense because there is no x component to this vertical line right here. It is all entirely vertical. So you could probably say this is gonna be 1.4 right here, but just to, to prove it, let's go 1.4 times the sine of theta. That's 1.4 times the sine of 90 degrees. And it's 1.4, 1.4. However, what direction is that gonna be in? Let's look at our arrow. Let's look at our, you might say our compass point right here. That's in the negative y direction, right? So therefore our 1.4 has to be negative. All right. Now that we have our x's and our y's, you can, you can sort of think of these as like terms, you can add them up. So let's add them up and get our x and y components for velocity of the boat with respect to the ground. So 5.5 plus zero, that's easy. 5.5 meters per second in the x direction for our velocity of the boat to the ground. And you can say that we have 2.6 minus 1.4. See, I think I can do that in my head. That's gonna be 1.2 meters per second. All right, so we have our x and y components now for the velocity vector of the velocity of the boat to the ground. Now let's just find out the magnitude and direction, and we can call it a day for part A right here, all right? So what's the magnitude of the velocity vector boat to the ground? That's going to be the square root of 5.5 squared plus 1.2 squared. That's our Pythagorean theorem, right? So 5.5 squared plus 1.2 squared, doing that on my calculator. Take that to the 1 half power, also known as a square root, and we get 5.6, 5.6 meters per second. That's our magnitude. That's how fast you actually are going through the water. Your boat is trying to move through the water at 6.1 meters per second, but look, you're kind of working against the current, right? So your actual velocity vector, this guy right here, is going to be only 5.6 meters per second. So it's a little bit of your energy is wasted going against the current. All right, let's find out our direction, and then that'll be it. What's the, the direction theta of velocity of the boat with respect to the ground? Uh, it's going to be the inverse tangent of what over what? Always the y over the x. So in this case, it's going to be 1.2 over 5.5. You can use absolute values. You don't need to worry about... Um, negatives or anything like that, like that right here. So what is the uh, inverse tangent of 1.2 over 2, sorry, 5.5? I get 12.3 degrees. And since we have a positive x and a positive y, that's going to be north of east. All right. So that is our actual direction. You can see it's a pretty, it's a much shallower angle that's that 12.3 degrees, much shallower than the original attempted angle of um, 25 degrees. Why is that? Well, it's because the, the current, the stream's current is pushing it downstream, so it's not quite so sharp an angle upstream. All right, well, that's example four or five, um, well, chapter four or five, example number two. And we're going to be doing more like this a little bit later on. In fact, the next video segment, we're going to address part B and part C. So keep this, um, keep this stuff in your mind because we're going to be applying it again. All right, thanks for following along. I'll see you on the next one.